Concluding his series of catechesis about the Psalms, Pope Benedict spoke about Psalm 110. He said it is considered one of the royal psalms and was a favorite in the early church. He also said the church reads this psalm as a prophecy of Christ's death and resurrection. St. Peter, in his speech on the day of Pentecost, applies his words to the Lord's victory over days and his exaltation in glory. From ancient times, this mysterious third verse of the psalm has been interpreted as a reference to the king's divine sonship, while the fourth verse speaks of him as a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The letter of the Hebrew to the Hebrew specifically applies this imagery to Christ, the Son of God and our perfect High Priest, who lives eternally to make intercession for all souls who through him approach the Father. The final words of the Son present the triumphant King as exe executing judgment over the nations. As we praise this psalm, we acclaim the victory of our risen Lord and King, while striving to live, to, to live ever more fully the royal and priestly dignity which is ours as members of his body through baptism. An important Canadian shrine known for being a special place for peaceful reflection is at risk of having that unique ambiance destroyed. St. Marie among the Hurons, also known as the Martyr's Shrine, is home to a preserved Jesuit mission village from the 1600s. The eight Jesuit missionaries who were martyred during the Huron-Iroquois wars are buried at St. Marie. However, a decision to allow a recycling transfer station to be built just across the river from St. Marie has Huronia Historical Parks, the Friends of St. Marie, and the Jesuits upset. Not only would the plant be in plain view of the historical site, it would be close enough that visitors to St. Marie would hear all the noise from the plant. Although the town of Midland informed the Ontario Realty Corporation of the application for rezoning, it appears the Ontario Realty Corporation failed to notify St. Marie among the Hurons. As a result, officials from the historical site were not aware of a public hearing that took place in April. The deputy mayor of Midland said now the officials can only work with the recycling plant to mitigate the concerns that have been raised. Last month, the Canadian bishops held their annual plenary meeting. This month, it is the bishops of the United States. The U.S. bishops are gathered in Baltimore this week for their annual assembly. The meeting began on Monday, and so far the bishops have elected a new chairman for various committees, a new general secretary, and have decided to create a subcommittee for health care issues. Catholic News Service has more about how this year's plenary assembly is going. The issues here at the uh, meeting are reflecting on things like the importance of right of conscience and uh, religious liberty, which is certainly a core value here in the United States, so I think a very important uh, area. We don't have as much controversial questions around uh, liturgy uh, as oftentimes takes place at the conference when you're dealing with translations and so on. The issues tackled this year have widespread support among the U.S. bishops, such as their efforts to fight the legalization of same-sex marriage, employ innovative evangelization techniques, lobby for sensible immigration reform, and to forge ahead with pro-life causes. Yeah, I think there's a great deal of unanimity among the bishops on uh, the core issues that the church faces today. There isn't the rancor that sometimes you hear or feel uh, in the public uh, arena, which is, as you know, not very helpful. There's a, a real sense of fraternity, a real commitment to the church. In Baltimore, this is Chas Muth, for Catholic News Service. And that's it for Perspectives. Don't forget to stay tuned for Catholic Focus.